early January, diver weather, cold, snow, ice. Oh, shit. Oh, no, 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 no. Oh. Oh. Oh, he's getting a little jumpy. I've made a uh, call over to Tim Lucier um, over in, on the Lake Sinclair area. We filmed over there before, and uh, actually, uh, quite a few years ago, uh, Tim, at age 17, guided the general uh, on Wolf Creek's first duck hunt over there. 84 ducks, 83 diving ducks, and a green wing teal. <laughs> it was a great time. He was here for two days. We filmed an awesome show, shot lots of ducks. He, uh, the general loved to shoot his gun, and it was just great. He was just, uh, he was a meat hunter, man. He just, any, any time you get to pull that trigger, he was shooting. I have since gone back, and Tim has gone out on his own this year, and uh, I called him to see what the canvasbacks were doing over there. There is no canvasback season in the United States. You, you can harvest them in Canada. At times, the canvasback shooting is superb on Lake Sinclair. Coming around, Bruce. Yeah, I see him. Don't stop short. He won't. Don't stop short. He'll come. Kill him. Oh, yeah. We got on the Canadian side, uh, scurried around getting hunting licenses and uh, met Tim uh, at, at one o'clock. And it's kind of a sunny day, but it was cold. And it was howling. And I'm, I'm going, I've never really had great afternoon hunting. Look at that ball cam. Don't get better than that, does it? Boy, oh boy. Oh, it's two bulls. Oh, yeah. Good job, Timmy. And I thought, well, Let's just go afternoon, get the afternoon, and then we'll have a good hunt uh, in the morning. Everybody shoot right to left, Dave, then okay. come back around. Yep. Here they come, boys. Yep. Oh, God. They're going to do it. Be good now, boys. Ooh, they're skirting. Oh, no, they're going to skirt the outside. Should I take them? Good job. They were good for him. Nice bull redheads. Yeah. I had to shoot. We haven't shot a hen yet. I had to shoot. There's some coming right up the pipe, Jeff. Well, oh, these are tall. Ooh. Ooh. Three bulls, boys. Yeah, Three bulls. Get ready. Kill them. Oh, good shot. Oh! Good shot, Jeff. Nice shot. Wow. Unbelievable. Did you see that last shot that, that Jeff made? Holy mackerel. Wow. 
Boy, did those come in nice. Wow. That is one big bull there. Good shooting, guys. Oh, man. Look at that. My diver hunting buddies over in Michigan are going to be absolutely jealous. This is the perfect diver hunt. Cold northwest wind, ice forming on the decoys, and it is just howling, and these birds are sucking right dead in. Kill that Drake redhead, Bruce. Don't shoot the decoys. It's what all divers, diver hunters want to do. And we, we didn't start till uh, 1 o'clock. And we're allowed four cans each. So it'll be 12 cans. And by the way, nowhere in the United States can you shoot a canvas back. Here you could shoot four cans and two redheads, or four redheads and two cans. Uh, with a total of six. So uh, we now have, and here's some cans working right now. Here, here. Uh. <laughs> they were a little tall. We've been hunting mallards all fall. And mallards look at everything but the decoys. And these divers only look at the decoys. We're sitting here, and, and I'm trying to hide. I really don't need to hide on these divers, and yet every time I see them, I'm down on our knee because I keep thinking I'm trying to hunt puddle ducks. Well, these these divers focus in on the decoys only. They are so, ooh, right here. Oh, dude. Oh, that was horrible. Thank you. I got that one. That was ridiculous for me. My hat blew off. <laughs> Holy mackerel. Good enough. Red hat. any closer. Yeah. They were perfect. Uh, Good shooting. Buddy. Thank you. So I killed our first hen, eh? Yeah. There. Right. Coming around. Oh, he's not coming. Oh, that's not good. Which do you like to hunt uh, more, divers or puddle ducks? I'd say divers. Bigger groups, fast moving, and they just the way they commit and loop around and come around you, know, around and around you again. You know what I mean? Just it keeps you pumped more, more. I yeah. think. Right here. Right here. I don't see him. Right here. We'll get him right here. Noon or right here. Boys. If you're in the spot where you can kill big bucks, you're going to kill big bucks, you know what I mean? But if you're in the spot where you're going to be able to kill uh, diver ducks, you know what I mean? You're going to take advantage of that and go kill diver ducks. Right straight behind. Redheads, eh? Yep. It's nice to watch them. Oh. Well, this is just nice oh to watch. Oh, yep. Look at this on the left. Look at Oh, my Lord. This is nice. This is just... I uh, wonder what got them up. This is just fun. They're just coming down the river. My hands are frozen to come in. That's single right there. Here we go, single. Right See over the here? Single? We'll kill him. Oh, yeah, we'll kill the single first. Okay, kill the single. That's probably the first time I got to shoot him out and sit on off the shore, and it was kind of neat. Most of the time, you got to go out in the middle of the lake and go battle the weather and whatnot, but rocking in the boat, carrying on, but. That was pretty good sitting on shore shooting. Oh, well, we only need three. So we might as well yeah, kill yeah, all yeah. three of them. Kill them now, boys. Go oh, kill the blue bulls. <laughs> so is that our? Uh, that's our limit of cans. That's our limit of cans. So we need uh, redheads and bluebills, right? We can kill, okay. Just, no more cans. Well, that is a cool deal. <laughs> All three came in and 
All three died. And then, then we had that bluebell come in right behind him. Yeah, we tried picking away at him. By the way, was, did, did uh, he was out there a little ways? Did you see that big bunch of bluebells that went up while you were out there? No. Yeah. There was oh, nice I seen it. Was it all bluebell? No. Yeah. Again, no place in the United States can you kill a canvasback. And everybody that's going to see this show, all the diver hunters, are going to be really jealous. Right here, kill him. And I hammered that Drake, I don't know how many times. I got that Drake way yeah. out there. It turned out to be uh, the best canvas back uh, shoot I have ever been on uh, in 50 years. And I've been on some pretty good canvas back hunts, but all conditions, wind howling, ice on the decoys, uh, we were just absolutely frozen, uh, ice on our waders. Uh, we couldn't take Mojo because we, we were pretty sure we were going to hunt in the river and we didn't trust the ice flows. But the conditions for the uh, die in the wool diver hunter were absolutely perfect. I mean, um, wind, ice, cold, uh, and birds that worked unbelievably. morning, uh, birds are always on the go looking for a food source. They're always, they're always moving and they keep doing that until, you know, 9 or 10 o'clock in the morning. Since Tim had gone out on his own, uh, he had uh, bought a brand new boat, brand new motor, uh, and had one of his buddies work on the blind. He had it absolutely immaculately uh, decorated. Why didn't we shoot? <laughs> the second day, uh, we had a total, totally different type of hunt. Uh, we had a mixed bag of puddle ducks, mallards, gadwall. Uh, we had several different divers. We did have canvas back. Good shot. Nice shot. Nice shot, Timmy. That was a bluebill. Stop. Yep. The Benelli did it again. There you go. We had to get out of the boat. I got out of the boat, and they had to go out into that river. And uh, that made for the boat was easy to pick up the birds. He has a net, and they just reach out the out of the opening there and pick up the birds. That you want to get on that one or do you want me to? Or? <laughs> we might try once more. It's been good because all our ducks are uh, focused into one area right now. The lakes are froze up, so we can, you know, kind of pinpoint them into the river, which is great. And well, it's we're uh, successful with our hunt today. I mean, we're shooting ducks. Uh, there's no wind, sun shining. Uh, pretty much a waterfowl's worst nightmare. Got a band. I'll tell you what, Timmy. Is that the sixth species of duck we killed today? A lot of species of duck. I don't know what we all got. Blue we uh, bufflehead. Bufflehead, bluebill, blue bill, redhead, canvasback, canvas mallard. mallard. That's all of them. We only have five? 
five different species. That's pretty, I thought we had more. Nice redheads. One thing that happened, and I've, I've never killed an old squaw, and we're looking down the river, and we look, and we see a big bunch of waterfowl just floating down river. I said, boy, and somebody got glasses, and they said, old squaw. They're old squaw. That's an old squaw. All of them. There's a drake in yep. there, too. Yep, I see the drakes now. Oh, my god. Oh, my eyes lit up. I was, I could, I said, boy, here's my chance. There was anywhere between two and 5,000 old squaw right on the St. Clair River. And they got as close to, I think Tommy will probably say 200 yards. And do you, th and uh, Coast Guard helicopter went over and, and busted them. And they all flew back up river, didn't even come close to our spread. And, um, but a chance to see 5,000 old squaw one time was quite a, quite of an experience. Look at them all. Get that on my camera. Oh, Tommy. Get that on I my have camera. never shot an old squaw. <laughs> oh, get over here. I tried doing it out on Cape Cod, and uh, I've been on Cape Cod three times, and I don't think I've ever missed because I, I, they just have never come in range. But I've been close, and I'm always drooling because it's a, it's a waterfowl that I've never been able to, to harvest, and I just wanted one. And I've never seen that many old squaw at once. Hey, what's, what's on the water? Old squaw flying. That's old squaw flying, too. Yep. We had a, a, a very pleasant surprise on our second day. He was doing his graduate work in waterfowl biology at, uh, at a university in, 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 in Canada, and that he was doing a study on uh, the die-off that they had had the previous year there on uh, the St. Cl Clair River. And last year we had a bunch of cans and redheads that died along the river here. Essentially they starved to death is what the toxicology reports and uh, the studies that they did when they sent them off to the lab. And so we're trying to figure out why these birds are staying here if they don't have enough food to survive the winter. So the study that I initiated here in September was to um, collect birds essentially from November through when they leave here in March and uh, monitor them on that while they're wintering here all winter long. So this is a Drake redhead and I'm tagging him with my, uh, just a little tag and then I'll write the permit number and everything on it here afterwards. He brings his bucket and he has uh, a log uh, that he kept log of all the birds. He had duct tape, he had syringes, he had, um, and I believe it was ethanol that he injected down their bill to keep uh, the food source in their digestive tract or in their stomach so that he could later uh, uh, detect what was in in the digestive tract and they estimated about 2,000 birds died. That's not a big die-off relative to the number but it's worthy of, of, of some research to make sure and he's pretty sure that that's for sure what happened that they just starved to death it was not necessarily a disease and I think we're doing a good job. I think duck numbers look bright in the future. Redheads, camas specs, everything. Um, you know, we keep on studying them. We keep on learning things. We try and, you know, prevent, you know, die-offs like we're, we saw here in the river last year, you know, with, you know, research-based research studies. And I think that's, that's what's gonna drive duck numbers in the future. The more we know about them, the better we can manage them, the better off we are, I think. Second day of our Ontario uh, diver uh, shoot. Uh, yesterday was dynamite with uh, Lucia Outfitting, uh, uh, Jeff and Tim, and uh, we picked up a kind of an uninvited guest, but boy, we've had a, a nice time with Rob Baden, uh, who's a waterfowl biologist, grad student here in Canada. We learned a lot uh, from Rob about the uh, study that he's doing on the cans and redheads, and uh, and we talked to him extensively about it, and that was really interesting. But I'll tell you. Uh, we've had a great time with Lucier Outfitting. Uh, you're a, a brand new company, a brand new outfitting uh, business, and you have showed us two great days of, uh, of waterfowling in, the, in, in early January, where our season's been over for two months over in Michigan. Um, uh, we really enjoy coming over here and 
anybody around the country that uh, their season's over way in early in the United States uh, can come over here to Canada and hunt ducks till, when is it? January? January 11th. January 11th. You also have a late goose season. Yep. Which is uh, normally uh, when? The end of February to the uh, beginning of March. Okay, and uh, we have we have uh, come over here and hunted with you on that, and and maybe we'll be able to come back again this uh, this February, because mm -hmm. that's a great that's a great time. Yeah, see if we can't kill some geese. Uh, but again, thanks a lot. Um, a lot of cans and redheads yesterday. Six species today. What? We had uh, mallards, uh, gadwall. Uh, uh, red head, redhead, cans, bufflehead, and bluebill. So we, six six species, in uh, about a four hour hunt. That was fun, and it's been cold too, boys, isn't it? <laughs> a lot of ice in the river, and uh, I want to thank you guys. No problem, anytime, Bruce. Okay, thanks again, you guys. I appreciate uh, sharing the boat with you. All right. Mm -hmm.